So welcome back to discussion on quantum theory of scattering. So uh, next uh, we are going to discuss uh, how we can use a partial wave analysis to find the expression for uh, the scattering amplitude and uh, the scattering cross section, particularly for uh, spherically symmetric potential. Okay. So um, uh, to the last class, uh, what we have discussed is uh, how we can expand uh, a function in terms of partial wave or uh, what is uh, we call a partial wave expansion so that is what we have discussed in last class so uh, then accordingly your incident wave which is uh, usually written as e raised to i k0 dot r can be expanded in terms of um, the partial wave so this is the the incident wave function psi i n of r can be written as sum over l i raised to l 12 plus 1 and basal function jl of k0 r pl of cos theta so this would be your incident wave function okay now then what would be the total wave function the total wave function psi of r would be the sum of psi i n of r plus e raised to i k r by r f of theta phi okay this part uh, we can we can call it as a psi scattering the scattering part of the wave function okay now this f of theta phi is called the scattering amplitude and for elastic scattering uh, the differential scattering cross section would be the modulus of f of theta phi square and so on. Okay, so that we already know. Now, uh, in case of um, a spherically symmetric potentials, so if we, the the potential of uh, uh, the, the interaction potential between the incident particle and target is uh, spherically symmetric, spherically symmetric means this uh, the potential is not depending upon the direction. So then. Uh, there will not be any phi dependence on uh, the total wave function or the scattering wave function. So the, the psi of r can be simply written as psi i n of r plus e raised to i k r by r f of theta. Okay. Now the psi i n of r, there is incident wave function, we can expand uh, in terms of the partial wave, which is sum over L sorry. Okay, sorry for the disturbance. So this uh, psi I N, I can write sum over L I raised to L 2L plus 1, JL of K0R, PL of cos theta, plus E raised to IKR by R, F of theta. So better I can copy this to the next page. Now in the asymptotic limit, so in the asymptotic limit means when R tends to infinity, then your Bessel function, this JL of K0 R can be possibly written as uh, one upon K0 R sine of K0 R minus L pi by 2. Okay, so this means this can be as 1 upon K0 R e raised to I K0 R minus L pi by 2 minus e raised to minus I K0 R minus L pi by 2 divided by 2 R. 
again what is uh, a raised to i l pi by 2 so if you look at a raised to i l pi by 2 which is cos of l pi by 2 okay or uh, in, in other words uh, what i can write is is equal to a raised to i pi by 2 all raised to l so a raised to i pi by 2 is cos pi by 2 plus i sine pi by 2 so this becomes simply i raised to l and what would be a raised to minus i l pi by 2 that would become minus i all raised to l that's it so then your j l of k 0 r can be written as uh, 1 upon 2 i k 0 r a raised to i k 0 r then uh, this become a raised to a uh, minus i l pi by 2 so this become minus i all raised to l then minus a raised to minus i k0 r i raised to l now therefore your psi of r it is uh, sum over l i raised to l 2 l plus 1 jl k0 r is uh, 1 upon 2i k0 r minus i raised to l <coughs> a raised to i k0 r minus i raised to l a raised to minus i k0 r then plus a raised to i k r by r f of theta so we can uh, simplify it further so we can write um, a raised to uh, minus i k 0 r terms uh, together so this can be as a raised to minus i k0 r <coughs> divided by 2 i k0 r sum over l become and there is an overall minus sign i think this minus can be written here so sum over l so it's running from 0 to infinity and we get uh, i raised to 2l then 12 plus 1 pl of cos theta okay we have forgot to write pl of cos theta here because when we write this here there should be a pl of cos theta there is a pl of cos theta here okay so i raised to 12 12 plus 1 times a pl of cos theta plus now i can uh, write um a raised to k0 r and a raised to ikr and now for elastic scattering this k0 must be equal to k so k0 must be equal to k for elastic scattering so hence uh, I can simply write e raised to i k r upon r times f of theta then plus sum over l i raised to l minus i raised to l will cancel then uh, there would be 1 by 2 i k 0 1 by 2i k0 sum over l 
2L plus 1 times PL of cos theta. That's it. Okay, so this is our important equation. Okay, for the time being, just put it as some equation number 10 for the time being. Okay, so I have just expanded psi of r in partial wave in some manner. Okay, now the same uh, wave function. Okay, it can also be expanded um, in partial wave as uh, some over m comma l. ALM RKL of R by LM theta phi. Okay, so any wave function we can expand in this particular manner where this YLM is called the, the spherical harmonics. Okay, so this is in general psi of R. Now the thing is um, uh, here the wave function depends only on psi of r theta, why it only depends on psi r n theta? Because for spherically symmetric potential, there will be, uh, uh, the, the phi term would cancel, okay. There will be symmetry along the, the phi direction. So what would happen is this is can be simply psi of r theta and when, and how can cancel phi? Phi dependence we can set m equal to zero. If we set m equal to zero, then becomes spherically symmetric. The psi of r theta becomes sum over l. I can write uh, r l a l uh, r k l of r, and this y l m will become simply the the regenerative polynomial p l of cos theta. Okay, now this uh, radial component of this wave function has to satisfy the radial equation, which is d square by dr square plus k square minus l into l plus one upon r square times r into r k l of r would be equal to two m upon h bar square v of r r times r k l and again in asymptotic limit there is when r tends to infinity so this become simply d square by dr square plus k square on r times r k l of r would become zero so that means this r k l of r has to satisfy uh, this differential equation and the form of r k l of r will be possibly uh, the Bessel function j l of k r or any moment function n l of k r okay so it will be uh, in general a uh, superposition of uh, both okay and it is possible to write uh, this r k l of r so i am skipping certain steps here so in the asymptotic limit is R K L of R. I can write uh, some constant C L by K R sine of uh, K R minus L pi by two plus delta L. Okay, so this is a one way of uh, writing R K L of R. Therefore, in the asymptotic limit, we have this psi of R theta which is sum over L, A L, R K L of R, P L of cos theta. So I can replace this R K L of R with uh, this term. And and this, this C L is just a constant that can be added, uh, that can be inserted inside the A L itself. So this can be sum over L, A L, one by K R, sine of kr minus l pi by 2 plus delta l p l of cos theta now what is the importance of this delta l what happened when delta l equal to zero so when delta l equal to zero so this becomes the psi of r theta becomes 
sum over L A L one by K R sine of K R minus L pi by two P L of cos theta. This is one by K R sine of K R minus L pi by two is nothing but J L. So this is equal to J L of K of R. So this psi of R theta would take the form of psi i n of r it will, it will be similar to the incident wave function apart from certain constants it will become incident wave function that is if delta l equal to zero then uh, this simply means no interaction there will be not any, any interaction that is a, the total wave function simply equal to the incident wave function so this delta l has uh, a certain uh, importance in the in the scattering theory and this delta l is called we can call it as a phase shift okay so this psi of r theta now i can expand in another way the psi of r theta i can write as one upon k r sum over a l the sign i can write e raised to i k r minus l pi by 2 plus delta l minus e raised to minus i k r minus l pi by 2 plus delta l all divided by 2 i times p l of cos theta okay now we can uh, rearrange this. If you rearrange it, um, we can write uh, it's minus e raised to minus i k r divided by two i k r sum over l a l e l of cos theta then i raised to l e raised to minus i delta l okay i have first i have written e raised to minus i term then plus e raised to i k r upon r sum over l one by to i k a l p l of cos theta minus i raised to l a raised to i delta l okay let me write <clears throat> this as uh, equation number 20 so we have two equation equation number 10 that we have written here and we have equation number 20 Okay, now this K and K0 are same. Now we can uh, compare the, the terms, the corresponding terms. We can compare E raised to I minus the coefficient of uh, E raised to minus I K R upon R or uh, to I K R. So if you do this, um, and that I am giving to, leaving to you, remember this K is equal to K0. <clears throat> Okay, we can show that uh, AL would be simply equal to 2L plus 1. I raised to L. A raised to I delta L. Okay, so this uh, you can do it yourself. So that is by simply Just comparing 
the uh, the coefficient of 10 and 20 the raised to minus i k r coefficient of 10 and 20 we will get this result and uh, similarly if you compare um, better we can use some other color a raised to i k r upon r of equation number 10 and 20 what we will get is we'll get the expression for f of theta and uh, the f of theta will get as uh, that is a really important thing that is our uh, uh, the topic today is scattering amplitude so the f of theta will get as one upon k sum over l 2l plus 1 p l of cos theta a raised to i delta l sine of delta l okay so now we have got uh, what we want so this is called the scattering amplitude um, uh, using the partial wave analysis and uh, here we can see a new term which is coming over here delta l it is called the phase shift and uh, it is a very important quantity when you are going to find uh, this f of theta now this f of theta since it is a sum of uh, l so f of theta i can write sum over l f l okay so this is the the scattering amplitude corresponding to uh, the different um, angular moment of quantum number fl so this fl is known as uh, the partial wave amplitude okay and what is the expression for fl uh, so the partial wave amplitude is given as 1 upon k 2l plus 1 pl of cos theta a raised to i delta l sine of delta l good so next uh, we can find uh, the differential scattering cross section so differential scattering cross section is d sigma upon d omega and for elastic scattering, it is simply f of theta square. Okay, so it is uh, f star of theta into f of theta. So this become one upon k square sum over l comma l prime to l plus one to l prime plus one p l of cos theta p l prime of cos theta e raised to i delta l minus delta l prime sine of delta l sine of delta l prime and what about uh, the total scattering cross-section? Total scattering cross-section is integral d sigma by d omega times d omega. And uh, so this uh, would become very simple. So this become integral d sigma by d omega d of cos theta times d phi now integral d phi will simply become 2 pi so it become 2 pi then integral d sigma upon d omega times d of cos theta now we can use um, uh, the the orthogonality condition of uh, the Legendre polynomial, which is 
the integral pl of cos theta pl prime of cos theta d of cos theta is given as uh, 2 by 2l plus 1 delta ll prime so we can use this uh, the orthogonality condition so then become 2 pi and uh, this d sigma by d omega become 2 pi upon k square integral 2l plus 1 2l prime plus 1 e raised to i delta l minus delta l prime i think uh, all these in all these terms can be taken outside the integration and better I, I can write only some l comma l prime and sine of delta l the sine of delta l prime and this integral so this become 2 by 2l plus 1 delta l l prime so if you sum over uh, l prime then all l prime will be replaced with l then uh, what would be the result then sigma that uh, would be is a uh, simple result it become uh, you have a 2 here and 2 pi so that become 4 pi by k square sum over l 1 to l plus 1 will cancel so 2 l plus 1 We'll get sine square of delta L. So that's it. So that would be the, the total scattering cross section. So remember the total scattering cross section would be independent on direction because it is summed over uh, through the all the directions. And again, uh, if you look at here, the total scattering cross section can also be written as sum over L sigma L. So sigma L is a total scattering cross section corresponding to a different angular momentum. And the sigma L is called the partial wave cross section. Where sigma L is given by 4 pi upon k square to L plus 1. sine square of delta l okay so if you look at um, uh, the differential scattering cross section uh, we have um, interference term okay uh, there are um, uh, pl cos theta pl prime cos theta so there are uh, the different ll prime terms are coming so we have interference term of uh, the partial wave cross section of different angular momenta however uh, interference term are not present the total scattering cross section if you look at the total scattering cross section it is only sum over l there is no uh, two different uh, angular momenta okay so that um, uh, the integral that l l prime that interference term would cancel when you are integrating over theta and uh, not that um, if interaction potential is zero then delta l would be zero that is uh, your delta l would be zero and uh, there will not be any scattering at all your sigma itself will become zero Okay, there will not be any scattering. Okay, now uh, what is the, the main advantage of this partial wave analysis? Uh, we can express uh, the scattering amplitude and the total scattering cross section uh, as an infinite series. Infinite series uh, in a way that uh, it can be the sum of uh, uh, the different angular momenta. So FL and sigma L. Okay, so uh, for practical purpose, uh, this series must converge and with certain number of terms and uh, this convergence is possible if um, uh, the product k0 a is much less than one so that is uh, this this a is uh, the the uh, the region in which um, the interaction potential is present so if k0 a is much less than one then um, we can use a partial wave expansion partial wave series uh, so the, this implies that uh, the incident wave energy
must be uh, weak or must be small. Must be small compared to the scattering potential. Okay, so this is possible. Uh, so this K0 is uh, corresponding to uh, the instant wave energy. And what is A? A is the range of scattering. So the range is also small. So both the instant wave energy and the range is small, then uh, we can use uh, the partial wave analysis. Now we can have a special case. So consider your incident wave is spherically symmetric, that is L equal to zero. So L equal to zero is, can also be called as S wave. So this kind of wave. So if this is your incident wave, then uh, the scattering amplitude will have only L equal to zero term. So that means your scattering amplitude will have only F zero f of theta would be only equal to f0 and f0 would be equal to 1 upon k a raised to i del 0 sine of del 0 and what about uh, the differential scattering cross section d sigma by d omega would be the product is 1 upon okay it is modulus of f of theta square and become 1 upon k square sine square of del zero okay and so if your incident wave is uh, l equal to zero wave or s wave then the differential scattering cross section is independent on theta okay so there is no theta dependence and what about total scattering cross section sigma so total scattering cross section as we know which is four pi upon k square sine square of del zero. So the total scattering cross section would be simply equal to sigma zero. Okay, so um, if you have uh, only uh, the S wave, L equal to zero wave, then uh, there will not be any angular dependence. But if you have L equal to one, L equal to one wave look like uh, a dumbbell shape. So obviously, uh, if you look at um, uh, the scattering amplitude of uh, L equal to one, we'll have theta dependence and uh, for different scattering cross section also will have theta dependence but for s wave there will not be any theta dependence okay so uh, any wave now uh, any wave uh, we can write as a superposition of uh, the different uh, the spherical harmonics that is your partial wave analysis and uh, now uh, we have discussed uh, in detail how we can use a partial wave analysis to have um, uh, the expression for uh, the differential scattering cross section and the, the scattering amplitude and as well as the, the total scattering cross section. Not that uh, this condition or uh, this treatment is valid only if the energy of incident wave is small and the range is also small. Okay, so thank you everyone uh, for watching this video. So only one topic is uh, remaining for us, uh, which is called the optical theorem. And that we'll discuss uh, in the next video.